I'm Colonel Scott Kane, Commander of the Arnold Engineering Development Complex in Arnold Air Force Base, Tennessee. As we start 2018, I wanted to pause for a moment and review Team AEDC's accomplishments during the past year. AEDC is an amazing team and it was an amazing year of developmental test and evaluation, and I only witnessed the second half. I think the largest success for us has been to become a fully operationally capable wing equivalent organization and incorporating new mission partners into our AEDC family. It was just over a year ago when the Secretary of the Air Force agreed to realign the 704 Test Group, the Hypersonic Combined Test Force, and the McKinley Climatic Laboratory under the command of AEDC. And we're not done yet. We'll continue to build on this new structure and take advantage of being a consolidated set of aerospace ground test capabilities for the nation. This year, we've had some notable achievements. We've brought facilities back online, had test cells running the most since the mid-80s, with several teams working 24-hour operations. We also executed an $83 million service life extension program and plan for a second installment this year. Here's some other specific achievements from the field. The 704th Test Group, headquartered at Holloman Air Force Base, didn't skip a beat when they were realigned to AEDC. The 586th Flight Test Squadron led the technical, safety, and operational planning, execution, and reporting for the Chief of Staff of the Air Force directed Light Attack Experiment, an experiment out of the Air Force Research Laboratory's Strategic Development Planning and Experimentation Office. Initial planning began in September 2016 and mission execution was in the summer of last year. The demonstration included four commercial, off-the-shelf light attack aircraft and was of significant interest to the Air Force leadership. The 746 Test Squadron at Holloman demonstrated an unprecedented ability to deploy to multiple test ranges and conducted 400% more navigation warfare events than previous years. They executed 13 nav war events in nine states over a three-month period to deny GPS during red flag exercises, a Department of Homeland Security event for first responders, and an Army network integration event. Finally, from the 704th, the 746 also executed a series of quick turn nav war test events of anti-jam GPS antenna technologies on multiple platforms to address threats seen in theater. Now I'll shift a bit closer to our flagpole. Our test support division replaced antiquated gas insulated switchgear and unit substations across the installation, which will enhance safety and reliability. Our civil engineering team completed office renovations in the Von Karman Gas Dynamics facility, where they replaced HVAC systems, upgraded fire suppression systems, improved facility lighting, flooring, and walls. Various teams within the test support division helped with airfield repairs, clearing of unexploded ordnance, and a 143-acre timber harvest in preparation for the base airfield reactivation. Our test systems sustainment division focused on developing pilot reliability-centered maintenance projects to validate the entire RCM process within AEDC. These have proven very successful and now the new processes will be applied to all $12 billion in AEDC assets. In the end, the maintenance program will be based on data, not time. The first pilot project was just completed and demonstrated an annual 32% decrease in labor, which can be redirected. I'm excited to see what this means across the complex. The TSS team also eliminated the need for an annual eight-week outage in the propulsion wind tunnel. The new plan breaks the effort into smaller segments and allows greater flexibility to work maintenance into the test schedule, minimizes impact to customers, and increases test schedule availability without increased acceptable risk. Another way TSS increased AEDC uptime and saved taxpayer dollars was to bring in situ acoustical testing of high pressure vessels to AEDC. The technique was used at the aerodynamic and propulsion test unit to inspect the high pressure air storage vessels for cracks. This method prevents the 90 bottles from being taken out of the system while saving more than $300,000. All of this innovation within TSS occurred while they were actively managing the Service Life Extension Program and preparing for a similar effort in fiscal year 2018. Finally, the Test Operations Division, which has locations on the East, West, and Gulf Coasts, successfully completed testing of a new type of turbofan engine, which can be modulated to adapt the engine's performance across the flight envelope, providing on-demand increase in thrust or highly efficient operations during cruise. The Propulsion Combined Test Force conducted the test for Pratt & Whitney 
as part of the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory's Adaptive Engine Technology Development Program. The Space and Missile CTF completed checkouts for the mid-pressure Arcator prototype, which upgraded the H-2 Arcator to meet development and testing needs for long-range strike and hypersonic vehicle materials. The AEDC team took this project from concept to new test capability in just over two years. The Space and Missile CTF also saw their work sent to space. They tested the Space System LORAL Rollout Solar Array, or ROSA, in the 7A chamber, simulating 15 years of orbit in 121 days, with temperature ranges from negative 324 degrees Fahrenheit to plus 223 degrees Fahrenheit. ROSA was successfully deployed from the International Space Station on June 19. The Hypervelocity Wind Tunnel 9 CTF designed and validated via computational fluid dynamic modeling a new Mach 18 nozzle required for the testing of advanced future hypersonic weapons. The test team at the National Full Scale Aerodynamics Complex tested a Sikorsky Boeing SB1 Defiant model for the U.S. Army's Joint Multi Role Technology Demonstrator Program. The data collected will help the Future Vertical Lift Program Office determine if coaxial rotors will meet future military requirements. Quite the accomplishments for one year, but as I alluded to earlier, we're not resting on our laurels. We've begun the groundwork for a new Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, CTF, at Hill Air Force Base, as well as a Directed Energy CTF at Kirtland Air Force Base. We're gearing up for another year of the Service Life Extension Program, as well as the Hypersonic Investment Program, known locally as Project Phoenix, where we're transforming our J-5 rocket facility into a clean air, variable speed hypersonic test facility. As you can probably tell, I'm proud of what AEDC has accomplished for our nation. We serve our warfighters to protect our nation today, and you, Team AEDC, are the reason we lead the world in aerospace technology. Your dedication to our mission will protect future generations. We serve in the greatest military in history. We keep it that way, and I'm honored to serve with you.